All right, so now after, I guess, beating this thing to within an inch of its life, now what we're going to do is we're going to start doing some speed runs on it. So obviously you can saw we took it on a carpet track. The thing took some jumps. It took a little bit of body damage, but that's because this vehicle, which is a flat course track racer, is not designed to do jumps. But it proves the durability of this vehicle where all the jumps all the crashes, all the everything abuse that I put this thing through is showing no signs of anything other than losing its little strut supports, which are these right here, which you had to expect these to crash off because of the impacts that the cab was actually taking, you know, on some of those hard hits. You also saw it drifting. And then you also, I think you saw, you saw me attempt to do a burnout with it. Yeah, it needs more weight. There we go, there we go. The problem with the burnout was that the vehicle is actually too light, which is a benefit for what we're going to do now. So we're actually going to start doing some speed runs. So what you can see is we've got our slicks on here right now, which is just, a, you know, we burned out the, the back slicks. So you can see the back slicks are burned out. The fronts are fine. We're going to take this body off. We're going to address a couple of things that I had noticed with this. One of them is the rear track. So the rear track, it's a little, it's a little off, and I feel what it's doing is it's actually creating a little bit of drag. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we pop this body off, right? Which I love the way this body comes on and off. So you can see we, we cleaned it all up. We got all the, you know, all the crap and stuff out of there. But when you look at the actual track of the vehicle, you can see that there's excessive toe, especially I think from what I'm seeing is I'm seeing there's a little bit of excessive toe Call on this side. Everything. So anyways, what we can see is obviously there's a marked taper it's actually on this wheel, as well as this wheel. What you probably can't see is that, for my eyes, it actually looks like the taper that's on this rear left wheel is actually more than that than that right side. And when you get a face-down look on it, I believe you can actually see that the toe, it's actually in a little bit further. But what's nice about this vehicle is this thing has adjustments all around. So even, let's say... On the bottom of the vehicle, it actually has several mounting locations for the battery. So what you can see is I'm using the furthest most forward position and the furthest most rear position for my battery tray because I am putting the maximum size uh, battery that will actually fit in this vehicle. And then the other things that you know I like seeing on here is on the back arms, if you can focus in on that screw, it's actually right there. That is a suspension travel limiter, which I think is actually pretty cool for this vehicle. But anyways, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take off both the left and right side tires or wheels. And when you look inside the wheel right there, if I can get it to focus in, see those small silver circular holes? Well, not really circular holes, but you can stick an Allen wrench in those. So that's actually what's called a pivot ball. And the pivot ball is you can adjust or fine tune the uh, rear wheels to have the proper amount of toe in or toe out that you want for this vehicle along with when you look at this perspective right here you can also change the actual uh, camber of the wheel so um, I'm seeing that there is a uh, we've got a slight amount of camber which is probably going to be fine I may just adjust it out just a little bit because it looks like, I don't know, looks like this wheel is actually a little bit more excessive than the other side uh, based upon, you know, referencing what it looks like on the bottom and then obviously seeing, you know, what the tire looks like. And you can see how this has definitely got a much steeper profile than this one where this one's almost more evenly worn, but we do have to adjust, we actually do have to adjust the toe. Uh, regardless, just because I feel in its current configuration, it is creating just a little bit too much drag that I actually don't want on my vehicle. So, yeah, let's adjust that stuff out. So, for now, we're just going to take the um, 
back wheels off because the back wheels are obviously the ones that are having the just slight bit uh, extra toe, I guess you want to say. It's got a slight bit amount of extra toe, so that's just going to be accomplished by um, turning these out just a touch. And that is, I believe, a four or a five millimeter. So those are five. So when you look down, when you actually look down on it, if it focuses, you can see between the right and left side, the forward ones are turned in just a little bit more than the back. So we're going to adjust these ones first. We're going to take an Allen wrench and we're going to go inside of there and we're actually going to turn the actual uh, pivot ball uh, shaft that actually goes into the arm itself. We're going to twist it out a little bit. And the size for that is 2.5 maybe? Yeah, size for that is a 2.5. So I'm going to twist that out. A couple turns. I'm going to crank this back in. Not too tight. Just tight enough so you get all the wiggle out. And what you're doing is you're checking for that uh, kind of um, side to side kind of wiggle. A little bit more. touch more. You're just getting the play that's in there out while maintaining still some movement. So that side should be good. And the way you can check it, right, is by eyeing the way it looks kind of going down the line. It is a lot better if you can put a straight edge on here, but we're just going to go for there for now. Throw that wheel back on real quick. Actually, you know what? We are going to throw on the original wheels. The only reason why is because they have a flatter profile, especially now. And we'll be able to see what it looks like with its original wheels back on. Now, I can tell I already like that. So we're going to do the same thing now to this side. Oh, this one was pretty loose. Now eyeing it, you can see it still has a very slight amount of toe, which is kind of what I want. So now what I want to do is I want to set it down on the table like this and get a more of a visual, let's say this way, to where that toe, so we are definitely looking a lot better. Now obviously I do have to just adjust this side a little bit because I didn't finish tightening it. Getting ahead of myself here.
Now I'm actually definitely liking that a lot better. Now the other thing I want to check is obviously the camber. So you can see, to me it looks like it's fairly even. It actually looks as though this side still has a little bit excessive toe. So we'll adjust the toe out of there. I'm going to adjust the camber slightly. Not a huge amount because I do want to have a little bit of uh, camber on there. But not, not as much as I'm seeing right now. So we'll just adjust that out. I'll be right back. All right, so now we're pretty much dead on to where I want it. Very slight amount of toe inboard at the front. Both left and right side look pretty damn even for what I'm doing. So we're just doing some speed runs. It'll be fine. Now what I want to do is I just want to adjust the camber just a touch just to get some of that wheel tip out. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. I'm liking how it's looking. The camber is adjusted by adjusting these top turnbuckles, both left and right. And uh, you just got to basically stick like a small Allen wrench or whatever inside and then rotate these. And which I'm going to rotate these. I'm pretty sure if I rotate them like, I don't know, that way. <laughs> we'll see. Now, obviously, depending upon, you know, how you twist these or how you turn them out, um, I did actually rotate it forward, if that makes sense. So you kind of like can't explain because whether if it's left side or right side, however you're looking at it. So I guess I just explain it to you that I took a body pin, dove it into the hole, and then rotated it forward, if that makes sense, from the top forward. So I can't tell you clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever, but whatever. You kind of get the idea. So we rotated it forward, and these ones, obviously, we're going to have to rotate the opposite way. Um, like I said, a body pin uh, works perfect. So just take a body pin, jam it in there, and then just um, rotate these. Come on. I'm telling you, it does work. I just did it. So there we go. Maybe just a touch more. Let's see how that looks. So you can see we do still have a very slight amount of camber. You can see it by the photo, the way it's lined up in that in that back corner there. And then this one right here actually has a little excessive camber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this wheel. I'm going to match this wheel to this wheel. So this wheel I'm just going to turn out just a little bit more. And that was, like I said, rotating these forward, just like that. So you can see, when you line it up to that forward wheel, you can see it does have the slightest amount. So now we have a very slight amount of camber and a very slight amount of toe. Um, things seem tight. I think we're good to go. So that was literally the only thing that I saw that I needed to adjust um, as far as the, the rear end goes. Because when I had noticed that I was on a flat surface, I, I did turn the flash off. It was killing my eyes. So when we were on a flat surface, what I could see was I could see the back end was um, kind of like walking left to right. I think it was more walking to the right, if I remember right, when I was going like on a straight line on, um, not pavement, because we really haven't done any pavement running, but when I was running on concrete uh, at Ruckless Hobbies, you could see the rear end kind of just fighting. It was fighting itself. So now there shouldn't be any fight. Uh, if anything, now it should track really well. Unfortunately, right now, it is raining, and this is not the type of vehicle that I'm going to take out in the rain, even though the ESC is waterproof, the um, the receiver is not, and I don't want to get this thing destroyed. So there's like a certain amount of, or a certain level of um, abuse that I will put a vehicle through. I mean, you know, I'm not going to outright abuse it, because I having an on-road car, for me, 
Like I said, it's been years and we've got a special body coming for this thing and we're actually going to convert it from the semi truck. We're going to end up using these directional wheels and tires right here. So this actually has a directional tread pattern and I like the style of these wheels. There's one other set of wheels that I want to go with and once you see the body, you may understand why I want to go with that set of wheels and it's it's in my opinion it's going to look it's going to look sick it's going to look sweet it's going to look wicked cool wicked pizza yeah there you go that's a word so anyways um got a bunch of things coming for the channel we still got to we still got to unbox this bad boy right here which I'll probably end up doing that today then we've got to unbox this bad boy right here which I'll probably end up doing today then we got to unbox this bad boy which I'll probably end up doing today Seeing it's like, you know, it's it's the weather, man. We're getting rain for like two days in a row, and miles will go ahead and get these unboxings done. Not to mention, I still gotta I still gotta install um I still gotta install the, the beast, the animal, old faithful's new motor inside. Then I've got to install where is it? I don't know. I gotta put the uh do a transmission comparison between that, and then we've got a bunch of upgrades that we're going to put on that, and we've got some upgrades we're going to put on that, and some upgrades we're going to put on that, and then, yeah, there's like just so much happening for the channel, so if if you're interested in coming along for the ride, like I said before, I'm in, and we're just moving, man, I'm telling you, 2020 for this channel should be pretty awesome and i'll tell you man i i'm so pumped about what's in that box right there so anyways thanks for watching this episode from rc guy garage it was just an update on the hebow and it's pronounced hebow like h-e-b-o-w hebow epx semi truck and i'll tell you right now this thing is it's it's a literal rocket it's a little rocket the thing is fast. The thing is above all durable. If you've watched any of the videos that I've done and some of the lives that I've done on that thing, I'm telling you right now, you know that I have beat this thing and there's nothing wrong with it other than blowing out the, 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 the support struts. So wherever those are. So other than, other than blowing these things out of the body, which I'll end up putting back on anyway, just for, you know, for the visual for the actual truck itself. But that, that body is going to be coming off. But that body is going to be coming off anyway, uh, once I'm done with all these tests. And then we're going to put on a nasty body. So anyways, thanks for watching this episode from RC Guy Garage. Uh, that's it. I'm out. Uh, get out there. Well, maybe not on a day like this, but... Yeah, why not get out on a day like this? You know I did it. Remember the Mojave? <laughs> that thing right there? That thing ripped it on hoons in the water. Same thing with that thing right there. That thing ripped it in the water. So don't be afraid. Just make sure that you realize or make sure that you know that certain things are covered. Like, you know, the receiver. Make sure that, you know, it's waterproofed. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'm out.